folks and Hello. welcome back to Narrowboat Florence Rose. Today we're going to talk about Narrowboat Security. Well, a lot about security comes down to common sense. It also comes down to equipment as well. But we'll start with some of the basics. There's places where I will and won't moor. Now, I'll give you an example, and it's a bit of a different one. I won't moor in Gas Street in Birmingham. It's a major city centre, narrowboat place where there's loads of moorings, there's water facilities, showers, etc. Loads of pubs, clubs, restaurants, you name it, and it looks really good. It looks great in the day. I've moored there in the daytime and had a few beers, met a few people, etc. But the nighttime is very different. <laughs> Gas Street, I mean, I can remember Gas Street when. There weren't one pub, one restaurant, there was nothing there. There was one pub in Gas Street and it wasn't, I'd say, a widely used one. It was one where it was just passing people, having a couple of pints, stuff like that. But these places now, it's, it's like Disneyland on the canals and every major place where there's lots of people attract all kinds of people. Gas Street of a night time, you, you imagine loads of people coming out of pubs, clubs, whatever, having a piss on your boat, jumping on your boat, walking all over it, things like that. This happens all the time. And unless you're ready to deal with that sort of problem, then it's... Uh, one of them, what are you going to do? Are you Are going to sit on your boat and let people run all over it? Or are you going to do something about it? The, the amount of beggars, prostitutes, junkies, you know, the dregs of society. And I'm being kind about what I'm saying for the YouTube audience. But whatever bad and rubbish parts that all tie into those type of people, that's what you're looking at. And that's why I don't moor in Gas Street. <laughs> not that it's nice to not cruise through, have a look, have a point, get get out of there. <laughs> and there'll be loads of people so we've moored, we've moored down there, brilliant place. Of blah. Yeah, brilliant. I'm glad you had a great time there. Um, I don't, if I can help it, I don't leave things to chance, especially in a major city like Birmingham. And I, I've... I've lived in Birmingham all my life, um, so I, I know quite a bit about the place. Let's put it that way. <laughs> so where do I moor? Right, at the moment I'm smack bang by, a, not a city centre, more like a, a larger town, like Solihull, Shirley, you know, places like that. I'm well within walking distance of everything I need. I'm not moored by any boats, but what I am moored by is a row of, I don't know, think about five houses and there's major businesses and there's also that bridge right there. Right there. So when you moor up as a point of reference, have a look at the road it's right by. Have a look at the businesses that you're right by and of course have a look at the bridge number as well because I've had times where the police have had to come to my boat and you'll give them the best directions in the world they won't find your boat not for a good while anyway they'll find you eventually or you might have to come out and find them but when it comes to the canals the police really don't have that much of a clue and it ain't their fault um, it's, it's just a fact of life so get points of reference where you are don't make a mental note of it put it on your phone take a photo what, whatever you need to do do it because if you need to be in contact with the emergency services for whatever reason 
you've got that point of reference where you can you you know you 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 can go from that basically. So I've also moored um, in the countryside and very rural, semi-rural, that type of places. Now, you might think the people there are great and all that lot, and I suppose a lot of them are, but people have something in their head where this boat, they can take whatever they want off it. And I'm not just talking about thieving young kids, people like that. I'm talking about the dog walkers, the 40 to 50 year old who are walking past and they'll see a nice piece of planed wood and think that's what I need for my shelf. I'll just take that off here. Who cares? They don't mind. If I cop you doing that on my boat, you're going to have a major problem because you are stealing from me. This is my property. I'm not coming to your house. This is my home. I'm not coming to your house and going, oh, look at that bench there, no one sat on it in the back garden, I'll take that. It's the same principle. But this is the mindset of people. They're, they're seeing a boat on the canal and thinking, oh, we'll just have that. So, the way you get around that is, don't put nothing on show, nothing at all. And that goes for your pram covers, and also your uh, cratch covers as well. I mean, pram covers and cratch covers are brilliant, but they hide so much. A person can get into your cratch cover and no one can see what they're doing. No one knows what they're doing. You know, someone might hear a couple of knocks here and there, but other than that, it, you know, the hidden away type of thing, you know, so, the types with the see-through plastic windows and that might be an idea but there's also a major downside to that that means anyone walking past can have a look into what's going on there is there anything to nick things like that now here's a couple of stories for you so you imagine I'm out and about just over here getting a bit of wood so I'm looking down the cut and I'll show you just what I mean. So I'm looking down the cut and round about where that boat is, that type of distance, that's the distance we try, we're talking about here. I'll zoom in so you can see just how far away it is. Okay, that's the distance we're talking about here. So you understand the distance. I've seen a bloke walking down the canal, uh, sorry, walking down the towpath. And this spot, the only people I'd seen were couples. Um, there weren't no houses, there weren't no shops. So you'd see couples on an afternoon, early evening walk, and you'd see different people of all ages walking the docks. They're the only people that you've seen down there. Didn't see no kids, didn't see people generally on their own. You get the idea. So, I spot this bloke walking down. Walking towards me. And he's about my age, probably in his 50s. He's wearing rigger boots. He's basically dressed like um, someone working on a building site. So anyway, I'm watching him. And he's getting closer and closer and closer. Then, about let's say three four hundred feet behind him another bloke's appeared walking down the cut dressed similar then all of a sudden this bloke who's behind him he's disappeared into the hedge so i thought okay maybe once a wee something like that that's why he's ducked in there no it wasn't your man now the first man, he's got close to me. I've said hello. Thick Irish accent. Hello. Carried on walking. So, I've now got my hatchet. And I've got it right by the wood. Close to hand. Just in case I had to chop some wood in an emergency. As this bloke has gone past, 
he's having a look at what's on the boat and he's having a look at my pram cover so I thought yeah okay now this bloke who's behind him he ain't come out the hedge yet and I'm thinking well what's he doing because he ain't having a word he would have uh, you know would have been well over by now by the distance he's walked down so anyway this bloke's past me now the other bloke he's now appeared out of the hedge so I thought to myself what he's done is he's watched and he's watched when the blokes got to the point of my boat that's why he's carried on walking so the other bloke he's had a look he's carried on but he's not stopped he's just looking as he's walking the other blokes come down said hello to him nothing not a dicky bird okay fine he's carried on as he's got to my boat another bloke has appeared same distance and I thought, okay, I, I know what's going on here. I then turned my attentions to the blokes who had passed me, not the one coming down. So I'm watching them further up the cup because there was another boat up there. One of those um, GRP plastic boats, probably, I don't know, 36 footer. And I knew no one was on this boat because I'd met the, the owner and there was a reason why there wasn't on the boat. So, what they were doing was, because I watched them, the first bloke that come down has a look. If there's anything to nick, a generator, whatever, on the back, it doesn't matter where it is, he'll go to the other bloke. And he stood there looking, as if to say, the summit there. So, he comes down, the second bloke, he's going to grab the stuff because the bloke who's further up there and the bloke who's further down there they're watching both ends of the canal they're the distraction they're also the early warning signal it's your man in the middle that's doing stuff and this is what they were doing I think they were gypsies based on uh, the way they spoke and the way they looked and they were gypsies on the rob because we're living in a society now where you can't step out of your house without being on camera. Don't matter where you go. Go to the shops, go wherever, it doesn't matter. But we're also living on the cut where people with any brains or any bit of common sense know there's no lighting, there's no cameras and generally there's not a lot of people depending on where you are. People know this, and this is why crime, burglaries, etc., on the canals has gone through the roof. It's gone absolutely mental. Now, that's just one story about what happened to me. I've, I've got quite a few different ones. I mean, <laughs> I've had people where youngish blokes, early 20s, not a tough in the red, telling me how much they love narrowboats and can we have a look around and all this lot. I mean, it, this is another longish story but you know uh, they pretty soon got the idea of um, what was in store for them uh, if they did try anything like that um, not not that they said they were gonna but I let them know that I, I was more than happy for them to uh, come unstuck that day let's say that so what are the things you can do right We've covered the moorings and you've got to use your head with moorings. If something happens and you can avoid anything else happening, unmoor your boat, go, just leave. Where, where I was moored before, I went to the shops, um, done a bit of shopping, I was gone probably half an hour, three quarters of an hour. Now, the people that were... Um, on the boats by me they um, when I come back they met me halfway up the walkway type of thing and they said to me somebody has just been down looking under your pram cover and I said hey yeah who's that then and they basically said it was a couple of young lads so I turned round to them and I says well what did they do and they basically said 
that um, they come down, had to look under the pram cover, had to look around, and then they they went. And I went, right. I said, so, the bloke on the boat, a few boats ahead of us, they've tried to rob his generator, they've tried to rob bikes, all sorts. I said, what they've done is they've come down, they've had a look, and uh, they're going to be back tonight. When it's dark, it's all the more easier. They've already spotted what they want, what they're going to go for, they're going to be back later. Straight away, I started my engine, I moved a bit of my crap around on the back of the boat, and I was gone. Because why would I wait around for someone to come to my boat to try and rob it for me to come outside, something happen, if that person gets hurt, injured or dies, it's me who's going to be in the nick for the next eight years. So isn't it easier to just unmoor your boat and go? So that's what I did. Why take the chance? The number one rule when I moor up is I never, under any circumstances, moor by benches. I never moor by man-made structures like um, a, a little wall or a little bridge where people can basically sit on it. Because I guarantee you, you can be in the best spot in the country. I guarantee you'll get piss artists, you'll get junkies, you'll get young kids smoking weed, getting pissed. I guarantee it, it, it happens in every area. Even in the countryside, you'll, you'll get these people. Not all the time, but you'll get them, trust me. It's, what, it's been my golden rule since I started narrowboating. Don't moor by benches. It's as simple as that. Don't moor where people can sit their arse down and have a jolly, and the jolly will be at your expense or your boat's expense. Because it will start off small, and as people get more tanked up or drugged up, whatever, then it, then it gets to be a problem. And a lot of people can and can't handle situations or they're not used to handling that sort of confrontation. So you'll get people where, I've had people, mainly single women, they'll ask to moor their boat, do you mind if I moor my boat there? And I go, no, I don't mind, you, you moor where you want her, it's a free country. Because it's that added level of security. But what you've got to also consider is how far people are willing to go for you. How far are you willing to go for a stranger to protect someone else's property? Things like that because we've probably all seen videos on YouTube where there's narrowboaters and they've got the, vid the phone and the video in five young kids who have just kicked someone's boat window in and, blah, and stuff like that. I mean, I'm not telling you how to um, deal with that situation or what to do. I mean, me personally, I know what I would do, regardless of whether there was five of them or not. There are ways around that. And in my experience, once a couple of them have been sorted, or one of them at least, the rest of them will shit themselves. They'll either run away or they'll do, do something to get out of the situation. But I've seen videos where there's blokes and they, they, they will do nothing. They don't do nothing apart from a, a little bit of video recording. Oh, you, you know. So you, you can't rely on other people. N not in the slightest can you rely on other people, especially people walking past on the towpath. You know, but... Um, this, this is all the things you've got to consider. If you're a continuous cruiser on your own, you, you're exactly that, you're on your own. You know, if you're a couple, whatever, that, that's different. Um, women tend to calm situations, blokes escalate situations because we've got that thing in us where we ain't gonna stand your shit, basically. Some, some blokes, anyway. So anyway, what I'm going to do is, I'm not going to, um, let me explain, part of my job I'll do um, CCTV systems for boats, I'll do other security features on boats, i.e. lighting, 
Um, there's also other things you can do on boats. Now, I'm not going to endorse camera systems. You can ask me till you're blue in the face. I'm not going to answer you. If I sell a camera system, I sell it because it's a good system and it works. And I only sell the same equipment that I personally use. It's a bit more expensive and it costs a bit more money, but it's well worth it. Now the cameras I use and sell, they start at £110 each for outdoor cameras. You've also got indoor cameras that start at £50 each and there is a big difference. Um, the 1080p, fully uh, wireless, they are um, the type where they've got microphones and speakers built into them so you can have a two-way conversation much like um, a ring doorbell type of system. The quality of them is excellent. I mean, I've been using them for well over a year now and I've never ever had one problem with any of them. And I've got how many? One, two, three, four, five. I've got seven uh, on the boat and they're excellent. Like I say, they're a bit more expensive. I've upgraded the um, the cases that they come in because the cases that come with the camera as standard aren't that good. I don't like them anyway. So get a better one, you know, which is an extra 15 quid and it's worth every penny. But what I'll do is I'll show you little bits. I'm not going to show you everything. It's as simple as that but I'll show you what you can do, um, you know, to make it a little bit more secure and a little bit less inviting because we all know that if someone wants to do something and they've got it in their head, the, the, there's not a lot that's going to stop that. So we'll have a little look around my boat and we'll, we'll go from there basically. So we've come to the back of my boat and as you can see I've got a pram cover up. But what's in the windows of this pram cover? It's just a couple of curtains so you physically got to open this but it stops people. I mean I can walk past my boat and I can look directly in there and I'll see all the goodies that are there to be had. <laughs> you can get sheets from charity shops etc you could probably get them for 10, 10 20 pence you know they're not much money but it stops people looking in there so i'm passing my boat straight away as soon as you come into line it looks like this has just got a pile of shit on there there's one of the cameras that's watching you now i'm not going to show you what's in there but as soon as you open that pram cover you're on a motion detector which is an alarm and you're also on another camera as well so when i mentioned extra things you've got stuff like this now it's an inexpensive pir sensor led solar light now that serves different purposes what it'll do is it'll light up the side of the boat of an evening which is always handy i mean i've got them on both sides of the box and i do want to put another one either side of that box um, but it also lets you know if there's someone walking past or standing outside the boat because it obviously comes on and illuminates the boats now i've just got them there so you could put them anywhere on your boat really that you wanted to. On the solar panels, got chains and locks. Four chains, four locks, and the these are bolted. These things are bolted on. So you'd need uh, spanners, stuff like that, in order to get them off. So coming down the boat, I've got a sensor light. So as soon as you get to, let's say here, that light is going to trip and it will illuminate the whole of this front area. So that also tells me that there's somebody around. If you notice, 
on the top of my boat it's all full of wood it's also full of different types of wood like things like this so just a bit of wood that I forgot to cut up but I suppose it could be used for other things <clears throat> all depends what you want to use it for hammering nails things like that now as you can see there's a forward facing camera and a rear facing camera but what you might not have noticed is that one there as well now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you just how fast these cameras work because I haven't got them turned on right so like I say it's all wireless works through an app on your phone so so uh, good the system is right then so oh I can't show it you have to turn my module off <laughs> right let's turn it on shall we so by the miracles of video editing <laughs> it's been a couple of seconds right I'm now turning the cameras on just waiting for it to come on okay it's making changes to the camera so I can't turn the other ones on yet there are currently a few of them on so I'm basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the volume up and I want you to hear basically what, how long it takes for the camera to be tripped before it actually sends me the notification right okay I'm not going to turn them ones on but I'm just going to give you a brief look no I'm not actually just wanted to quickly show you that I mean the picture quality is absolutely excellent and as you could hear it as well the sound quality is excellent as well so yeah that's that